What's going on, Flood Nation? I hope you're ready for a little bit of good news. There is still good news here in crypto land. You know, what we really should be focusing on is not all the negative stuff. There is plenty of negative stuff to focus on in the blockchain industry or any industry for that matter. But what we really should try to turn our attention to, especially in these times of protracted, extended, almost disheartening bearishness, is all the good that we're doing here in the community. I mean, you see so many thought leaders here in the cryptocurrency and blockchain industry getting so excited about some initiatives. So we're going to talk about the most exciting blockchain initiatives that are going on today, ones that are really bigger than the price action that we're seeing on the Bitcoin or the cryptocurrency market charts. And these are the things that are going to bring us out of the bear market that are the long term trends that are going to allow this industry to flourish and really fix some of the biggest issues with the cryptocurrency markets that stopped it from becoming a total revolution in 2017 when one could argue it might have been too early. So let's get to it. What are the most exciting initiatives in the cryptocurrency and blockchain industries? Number one has got to be the backed platform that brings together such retail and technology heavyweights as Starbucks, Microsoft, Galaxy Digital, the New York Stock Exchange's parent company, ICE. Backed is one of the most exciting platforms because it will allow for institutional investors to get their hands on Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies much in the way that they're used to with custodial solutions worked out and that they're going to be proceeding and offering a wide variety of Bitcoin products that will hopefully be a catalyst for the next bull run. These are the things that we've been talking about when we talk about the ETF. This will allow for insurance companies and pension funds and big institutional investors to really get their hands on some of that precious BTC and allow for the market to see a huge influx in not only the amount of people and entities that can have access to it, but also the amount of volume that is being transacted upon globally. It's pretty exciting. And these kinds of catalysts, whether it's the Bitcoin ETF, another initiative we should be very excited about as the SEC becomes more and more pro Bitcoin, more and more pro cryptocurrency. These are the kinds of regulatory changes that we can look to to be really catalysts to the next bull run or really to the whole beginning of the era of cryptocurrency as we will know it in the future. The next thing we should be really excited about is the Lightning Network. Now, there are mixed reports as to how well the Lightning Network works and how much really scale and people it can support, how many transactions, how much capital can go through the Lightning Network. But what we're seeing is the Bitcoin network evolve and add a second layer, a super highway, if you will, that will allow Bitcoin to travel at the speed of light and will allow it to be used for minor transactions and small purchases like, for example, that proverbial cup of coffee that everyone likes to talk about. So the Lightning Network, whether it's fully functional now or whether it will be fully functional in the next six to 12 months, this is a huge development that could really speed along the path towards adoption for Bitcoin as a global currency. It's very exciting to see, and hopefully as Lightning Network develops, this could be one of the defining characteristics that brings Bitcoin into the modern age. Now, another category of exciting initiatives is, of course, payment protocols. We all know that sending money, wiring money is historically very expensive. It takes time. It's just a clunky process. Now, these payment protocols such as Stellar Lumens and Ripple are trying to accelerate that process and make it more of a modern experience so that money can travel like email. I believe those are the taglines used to describe these payment protocols. Now, these payment protocols like Stellar and Ripple will hopefully completely revolutionize the way that money travels. And with that, we can see an adoption of blockchain because it's financially so much more beneficial than using outdated systems like Swift. But obviously, you guys probably know a fair amount about Stellar and Ripple. These are some very exciting initiatives, and these initiatives could be so successful and so beneficial to the banking partners that use them that really they lead their own charge and they create their own catalyst for the next bull run. Another thing that we just have to talk about is IBM. IBM blockchain is so exciting. They're partnering with local governments. They're doing supply chain management. They're a huge aspect of the backing behind Stellar Lumens and all of the cross-border payment solutions or their universal payment system that is going to really challenge what Ripple is doing. IBM has their fingers in so many different pots. It's a little bit of a shame because you can't just buy the IBM coin, but I think the way they're going about it is a lot more logical and they're focusing on individual problems and providing individual solutions. They're not trying to do a one size fits all sort of blockchain solution. IBM is trying to do it all. They're doing a lot of very significant work in the industry, partnering with huge entities, governments, trying to make a lot of things move through the blockchain. And for that reason, I think they're one of the most exciting initiatives in the entire industry. Now, I have to talk for a second about ontology. Ontology does an interesting thing. It's focused on bridging your real world identity and your real world sort of rights and benefits and protections into the blockchain world. Something that we haven't talked a lot about, but something that I could see becoming an absolute cornerstone of the future of the blockchain industry. 
ontology is going to allow people to access and prove who they are so they can access health records, personal information, medical benefits. They can prove that they're accredited investors and access investment opportunities. There are pretty much unending ways that ontology can interface and bring your real world identity and I guess your rights and your protections into this online blockchain world. For that reason, I think ontology is bigger than just any blockchain. It's bigger than its relationship to NEO. I could see ontology really working with a lot of different blockchains if not all the blockchains, and starting to become a real buffer, a layer that you go through to access different dApps on different networks and really prove who you are and have not only proof of who you are, but protection within the environment. So I think ontology is going to be a huge aspect of cryptocurrency and blockchain environments moving forward. And for that reason, I'm very excited about what they're doing. Now we have to talk for a second, of course, about logistics supply chains. I think that the logistics supply chain world will fully run on blockchain within the next three to five years. We're talking about an industry where 10 trillion dollars and yes there are a lot of players trying to solve these problems whether it's Walton Chain, V Chain, Ambrosis, TE Food, Origin Trail these are all great projects that I've personally invested into but beyond that we're seeing IBM blockchain track the supply chain management we're seeing Alibaba get into blockchain we're seeing Walmart get into blockchain to track their lettuce to see when E. coli breaks out. We know that this is going to be huge. There probably will not be a clear dominant player for the foreseeable future, but we definitely know that these players are coming up and that the ones that win are going to win huge. I'm so very excited about logistics supply chain cryptos and I find them to be one of the most exciting aspects of this entire industry. Next, we have stable coins. People don't realize how big stable coins are gonna be because once everything's on the blockchain, you're not gonna wanna go back to something that's off the blockchain like money wiring or check writing. Once you're in this digital free flow environment where everything's quick and instant and, and friction free, you're not gonna wanna go transfer back to your bank, have it wait days, write a check, have days to clear. You're talking about moving back to the stone age if you're talking about doing that. So once we have security tokens, once we have different business models exist on the blockchain, stable coins will become the gasoline that fuels these things and moves money, moves value between things. Not everyone wants a volatile cryptocurrency as their bank holder, their store of value. Not everybody wants to get paid in a fluctuating value holder. Some people want stability. Probably most people want stability. So these stable coins will become increasingly useful. We're talking about true USD, USD Tether. We're talking about Fed coin. We're talking about the Goldman Sachs dollar. We're talking about Gemini dollar. We're talking about basis. We're talking about DAI. They keep coming because they're so useful they will be incredibly useful and they're also really good businesses as I explained on a previous broadcast when you create a stable coin let's say you put a bunch of money in the bank and create coins that represent every dollar you have in the bank then you trade those coins most of the time you keep almost every dollar you have in that bank account and now you've been trading and you get Bitcoin and Ethereum and other cryptocurrencies so you have so much liquidity that you've created by creating a stable coin I can see them becoming a very popular business model going forward and finally we have security Security tokens. Security tokens are going to represent real world assets. They're going to take liquidity and inject it into traditionally illiquid environments like real estate, like art. Let's say you have a lot of art. You have millions and millions of dollars of art, but it's very hard to trade a little corner of your Picasso to go on a vacation or you know whatever you might want to do. So by taking real world assets like real estate, like art, like really anything and tokenizing it, you can provide fractional ownership to many people and create a ton more liquidity and even premiums on that liquidity. And that's why we're going to see so much talk and hype around security tokens in the near future. Some security token platforms that I really like are Stellar, first and foremost. It's very much so a security token token platform. We have Polymath, we have Templum, Trust Token. There are so many that keep coming up as real traditional business people understand the potential, the latent potential here in blockchain to take real world assets, put them on blockchain and give fractionalized ownership to the world. So I think security tokens are going to be phenomenal, it goes hand in hand with stable coins. Really all of these are just tremendous initiatives that I'm super excited about. And I think they support the argument and really give a lot of evidence that this blockchain revolution is just getting started and that era three or whatever, or act three of the blockchain revolution will be a tremendously successful and long lasting one. Let me know what you think about the most exciting initiatives in the blockchain space. If I missed one, throw it in the comments section below. I'm always curious what you guys think. If you're not already subscribed to this channel, I encourage you to hit that sub button and click that little bell notification. That way you're made aware whenever I put out new content. I'm Elio Trades, you're watching FUD TV, and I'll see you very soon on the next episode.